Hello and welcome. My name is James from the DSO Imager channel and tonight uh, we're going to go over uh, one of my recent uh, targets, uh, NGC 4725. So this is a, I don't want to say it's a lesser known galaxy. You don't quite see it as often uh, as you see some of the other typical galaxy uh, season targets. Uh, but this is still a pretty cool target. And so like so many targets, uh, they, they for me often start uh, with Stellarium. And I was tooling around in here one night thinking about what I was going to go for next. And the funny thing about Stellarium, at least the way I have the, uh, uh, the settings on, is that you notice it as you scroll in you see more, right? And that's, I think that's based on the magnitude. And so uh, M64, pretty common target, and you got some others over here, right? Magnitude 8, magnitude 8. So I was thinking about this one because I hadn't shot this one before. I was looking for one that would frame up well on the edge, and I'm scrolling in, and I noticed that we had something that appeared. Look at that. I mean, it's not even, it, it doesn't even get labeled <laughs> until. So I just kind of caught this. I, I, I've seen this galaxy before, but I didn't realize that it was uh, in coma for whatever reason. So there, there it is, a magnitude 12. Uh, but it's a pretty good sized galaxy. Let me go ahead and pause that really quick. The other thing is, you got two other galaxies next to it. And. Uh, Stellarium's not showing you what they look like, uh, but they actually both look pretty cool. This is a neat spiral. This is an edge on spiral. And this one, in addition to 4725, are actually interacting with each other. And so let me bring up my frame here and set it to the right camera. So this is this angle is pretty close. Now, usually when you see this one shot, it's usually these two. But I took a slightly different framing this time around, and I went for that. Uh, so let's let's jump out of Stellarium and uh, see what I ended up with. So here we are in uh, Pix and Sight, and I did get HA luminance red, green, and blue. So this is with uh, the ZWO 294 mono, and the filters are all astronomic. Uh, the luminance is with the L3 filter. The RGB is with the deep sky filters, and this is a six nanometer HA filter. Now, I ended up not using the HA in this one, and the reason is that I took HA first uh, because. Uh, when I started on this target, the moon was out. And after I switched over to luminance, the, the whole image train had rotated a little bit. And so the problem that I ran into is that if I included the HA, it was going to chop off the top here. So I mean, not a lot, but I really liked this fainter region here and I didn't want to sacrifice that so you know if I want to do luminance I'll have to re I mean uh, HA I'll have to reshoot and I mean if we look really close I don't think at least the HA data that, that I got isn't that spectacular anyway I think it would have added a little bit of color but eh, whatever so anyway here's uh, 11 hours of luminance see the uh, it's well it's not showing up too great here you'll see it a little bit better after I run dynamic background extraction but you get some you can see the effects the gravitational effects that uh, is taking place there uh, here's our red three hours on red Little 
under three hours on uh, green. And you also notice I've got a problem with my flats for sure. Uh, so fortunately for this picture, dynamic background extraction saved the day. Uh, but I definitely need the redo flats on this image train here. And there's our blue. All right, and so what I did is I combined the LRGB well, first I registered and ran dynamic background extraction on everything. And uh, combined the LRGB, and then I did a um, uh, background neutralization and then color calibration. And then I stretched it, uh, I believe using the um, easy processing soft stretch. And what I ended up with was this here. So this is before the stretch, all right? That's just auto stretched. And uh, this is what it looked like after stretching. And with the luminance, after running deconvolution and everything, I ended up with this here. Now, I push the deconvolution a little bit more than I usually do. And you can see it here with the circles on the stars. Probably what I could have done was mask these stars uh, and then ran deconvolution against it so we wouldn't have this in here, but you know, whatever. I decided to just leave it. it it's, it's not bothering me too much, and you really have to pixel peep to notice it. All right, so uh, moved over to a different uh, workspace uh, to do some work on this, and Let's see if I can step through uh, some of the stuff that I did here. Okay, so first things first, take the stars out. Uh, that star exterminator, the version 8 of the AI, is just really good. Now, on the past, it it's with older versions, it's done great on nebula, but uh, galaxies, it was always kind of hit or miss. Um, but, I mean, it does a really nice job here. I mean, it even took these guys out inside the galaxy. And it left little bits and pieces. That's the other, the other issue that I've had with it in the past, is that it would uh, cause, uh, it would, some of the really th uh, faint galaxies, uh, the star exterminator would eat them up. But, and, and this is maybe not a great example, because you're not seeing that much of it out there. But anyway, it does a great job. And if I'm not mistaken, you're seeing hints of IFN in there. And this looks like a nice tidal stream here. I don't believe I preserved it very well. I mean, this is really faint. It's just 11 hours of luminance. Perhaps if I uh, doubled the luminance, um, this would, would have survived. But anyway, so here we go. Working some colors, increasing saturation. You notice I got a mask. The mask should... Yep, just have the galaxies outlined there. Yeah, so you can see I didn't I didn't do anything with that over there. Step through, some work in the galaxy. All right, I knew that I had some detail in there, but you couldn't see it too well. So sometimes you have to dial back the exposure to get that to be more visible. And this is with uh, convolution unsharp mask right there so a pretty significant difference I don't think I overcooked it I mean it looks a little bit but zoomed out working the colors more and ended up here and one more workspace change here and let's see. All right, so I did a few different things here. Uh, when I got to this point, I wanted to get some noise reduction. Let me get back over here really quick. So I mean, if you see this, we got we got some noise in here, and um, I wasn't too happy again with the results I was getting with uh, TGB and MMT. So I ran it through um, Topaz, and you can see this is a good example of it. So this is before Topaz and after Topaz. Oops. 
So you can see the detail isn't affected. If anything, maybe it's a little bit softer, but it did a really nice job of cleaning up the noise in the background. All right, now I keep the topaz settings pretty light. Uh, I don't want the pictures to look too smooth because then I don't know you get like this at least with my stuff I end up with the, like this blotchy black background which I'm not crazy about and so after I ran it through topaz I did a little bit more work with it uh, but uh, and I did some work on the stars all right so uh, let's take a look at the stars real quick this is how they look I always find it interesting how even though it's uh, RGB, you always get like hints of magenta in there, right? So again, my typical star de-emphasis procedure is really very basic. I'm just using curves, right? So I pull back on curves. Uh, then I invert the image and I subtract green using the SCNR tool invert back stars are already looking better I remove more green and then I boost saturations right so you're seeing you're seeing the change especially if you look in this area over here boost and saturation now we got some color with the stars and that's all that's I mean that's all I, I, I just did a couple applications of saturation and that was it and the final image is this here So overall, I'm pretty happy with the way this one came out. I, I didn't get to go as long as I typically do. I mean, you guys know I usually do 20, 30 hours. And I think this one came up a little short. Uh, what, 11 hours luminance and roughly 9 hours? Well, it's about 20 hours, and I guess it's not too bad. But anyway, here it is, right? NGC 4725. Uh, love to hear your guys' thoughts on it. Uh, this is a really cool galaxy and it should have a name, uh, but I don't know what we would call it. <laughs> Maybe the, uh, the big wheel galaxy or something. <laughs> if you guys got any uh, suggestions on a name, uh, go ahead and drop them in the comments. And uh, as usual, uh, don't forget to give the video a like and uh, subscribe if you're not already. Thanks a lot and clear skies.